let me first of all admit that in the archaic laws of the criminal code act and the penal code act that were enacted probably before i was born you see the sections maybe section 373 of the criminal code act that governs the southern region and maybe section 391 of the penal code act you see traces of criminalizing defamation however some states knowing that some of those provisions were part of what we inherited from the colonial masters who wanted to shield themselves from the painful pains of the freedom fighters they now criminalized anybody that will bring their actions to disrepute. And that was the reason for all this defamation purported as a criminal offense. But when nations saw that criminalizing defamation may stifle free speech, because if you go to the Constitution, Section 39, Freedom of expression is generously couched to say a man has the right to receive idea and information and has the right to express it the way he deems fit without undue interference. So because of the fear that when you criminalize defamation, it could impinge on the freedom of people to express themselves freely. Because the greatest secret of the success in a democracy is accountability and transparency. So when people are allowed to express themselves freely, they hold the government in power, accountable, and the government will become transparent. And that is why they made copious provisions in civil proceeding for any human being that is claiming his defame to pursue the civil remedies. So... The question now is this. Why is Afe Babalola pursuing the criminal remedies? Why don't he pursue the civil remedies? In the civil remedies, the two parties will bring their reasons why they made the comment. And an independent and impartial job will look at them dispassionately and reach a judgment in a criminal proceeding it is no longer an offense against Afe Babalola it's an offense against the state and the burden of proof is no longer on Pharaoh the burden of proof is now on the state and they need to prove it beyond reasonable doubt Pharaoh Timmy has the right to remain silent until after the trial without saying anything. So taking him to a criminal court, we are even in the modern law of Ekiti State, they have jettisoned defamation. I want to presume in their state laws as a crime. Lagos has jettisoned it. Now, I was worried about the statement from Afe Babalola Chambers. That if Pharaoh Timi can prove himself, he will be released. That has actually portrayed them as colluding with the security agencies because it is not in their power to release. So confessing that if Pharaoh Timi says this, he will be released, is trying to say that they are in collusion with the security agency, that they have the power to detain him and release him. That's the implication. Confirming our fears that this is an intimidation. Why arrest Pharaoh Timmy before you conclude your investigation? The Supreme Court has made it clear. You don't arrest a man and run around for investigation. You would have concluded your investigation. Then you will arraign him in court. Then why go to court to get a remand order to remand him in prison? You just want to intimidate him and punish him unheard. They were saying, I heard, that uh, they, they've invited him 
to come and he didn't come. And that was why the remand order. Excuse me. Before that time, Faro Timi granted a press interview that Luko is here, you know, that they know where to get him. They know where to serve him any pepper. Meaning he is actually only not public that he has not received any summon or any pepper. He said there is a conspiracy. And he said no Nigerian should cry for his freedom. That all Nigerians should insist that they should take him to court. Now, in America, by way of comparative analysis, people are even allowed to make a plea from their house. They will send you the charges and you would state in writing whether you are pleading guilty or not. And if you say you are not guilty, then they will tell you the day you present yourself to court for the commencement of the trial. So a man, you know where he's staying, who does not go to London or America and be tweeting from there like some cowards do. But he has been in Nigeria and told you he's not going to anywhere. And you know where he is. Have you served him any paper personally? If you have, what's the evidence? What they would have done is, if they've been serving him, because there has to be personal service, if he has been rejecting it or avoiding it, you make it public. I did not see any public declaration by the police or any security agency that they have been serving him and he has not been honoring it. Remember Yahya Bello. EFCC made all the arrest attempts and all the going to court public before they even served a bench warrant. Did you hear that in Farrow Timmy's case? So I suspect conspiracy. And then the affable chamber confirmed when they say if he proves the allegation, sorry, in criminal proceeding, it is the prosecutor that will prove all the allegations beyond reasonable doubt. So if they wanted Farrow Timmy to prove whether what he's saying is true or not, they would have gone through the civil proceeding where they will now allege defamation. And Farrow Timmy will justify that it is not defamation, that it is the truth. They are the facts. And then they did not go through that procedure. And that is what is making us to conclude reasonably that that is an attempt to intimidate, to frustrate and manipulate Nigerians and punish Faro Timi for his political stand on issues without giving him fair hearing. He said he's a victim of Niger. I agree with him. So what they would have done is that they would have filed the charges publicly, told Faro Timi, come and defend yourself. He comes to court this day, on the day, defends himself, and then the court will decide. Why remand him? Anytime you start remanding anybody, you've already started punishing him. And nobody has any power to punish anybody except the law court. And every law court is expected to act judiciously and judicially. Not a man order is unjust and is calculated to punish without fair hearing. So, my take of a Babalola chamber through the confession of the chamber that Farotimi, if Farotimi proves himself, he will be released. They have just confirmed our fears that there is a collusion based on that thing between them and the security agencies to punish Farotimi for his stand on issues. And of course, the security agencies are under President Tinubu. President Tinubu, you remember, ordered the release of those children that were illegally detained. So he ought to have immediately ordered the release of Faro Timi so that he does not portray his government as using the security agencies to intimidate political opponents. Because that's where I will conclude it on. 
Because he's a political opponent. And worldwide, anything you do to a political opponent, the people of the world have the right to interpret it that you want to intimidate a political opponent. If you ask me, I would say I believe that this is still an intimidation of political opponents and they should desist from it, release Faro Timi unconditionally and allow him to have his day in court if they believe that he committed any offense. You know, based on archaic, outdated, purported defamation offense, which is no longer existing in the books of some of the advanced states in Nigeria that do not want to impinge free speech, like Lagos. So it's just, uh, it's just a ruse. It's just a victim of Nigeria, as all of us are.